It's Winter Picks Dinner, Epcot Edition. Hey, ma'am, fam. We are here traveling the World Showcase for the first Winter Picks Dinner of 2023. Join us as we sample some of our favorite food and drinks across Epcot. Are you ready to battle it out? Oh, yeah. I feel good about this one. Yeah, I feel good too. The way Winter Picks dinner is simple. We are gonna have a multi-course meal around World Showcase, and each course will be decided upon by the winner of a round of rock, paper, scissors. But because this is Epcot, because this is World Showcase, and there is so much delicious food here, we've decided to add a special twist. In the past during Winter Picks dinner, when one of us picked a restaurant, we would eliminate that restaurant from contention. Here in Epcot in the World Showcase, it's a little bit different. We're going to eliminate the country we choose once we go there for our pick. Which is a good choice, because if I had it my way and I won every round, we'd eat every round in France. Same, but Mexico. Fair. Ready? Round one. Cocktails. Cocktails. Tons of options. I'm thirsty. Same. Really can't go wrong, but. On shoot? Yep. Rock, Rock paper, paper, scissors, scissors shoot. <gasps> well, that's disappointing. Oh man, what do I pick? You know, I feel like my luck has finally run out. I'm sad. 2023 is off to a great start. Obviously, one of the peels of Epcot is drinking around the world, so there's something delicious to drink in every World Showcase country. So the issue isn't picking something good. The issue is picking from a country I don't mind not eating at, which means I'm not picking Mexico, which is probably the most popular place to drink because of margaritas, but I want to potentially be able to eat in Mexico. So I'm not gonna pick Mexico. I'm not gonna pick France for the same reasons. I could do Morocco, Spice Road Table's pretty good. Germany, beer is always a good option. But you know what? This is the first Winter Pick Center of 2023. I'm going to kick it off my first cocktail in a Disney park of 2023. I'm going to my favorite place to drink in this park. Welcome, friends, to the United Kingdom and the Rose and Crown Pub. This is one of my favorite places to grab a beer in all of Walt Disney World. My favorite place to grab a drink in Epcot. Well, one of, since we eliminated margaritas. The Rose and Crown pub, as the name would suggest, serves beers and different pub blends. It is a full bar though as well if you're not much of a beer drinker, but as someone who is, I love coming in here getting a little AC. I love getting a beer and listening to the band play in the courtyard. So enough talking, let's get to drinking. The Rose and Crown has two sections. It's both a pub, which we'll be going to today, as well as a sit-down restaurant. This is one of the few lagoon side restaurants, so if you can score a dinner reservation there during fireworks, you might have a pretty good view. I can't actually go inside without sharing at least one fun fact about the Rose and Crown. You may notice right here that the slogan of the Rose and Crown pub is Odium con Dignate, which translates from Latin to leisure with dignity. And man, does that explain what we're about to do. I was thinking back to all the times I'd seen people in the Rose and Crown. That being their tagline. Here she is. Of all the beverages in Epcot, I have probably consumed this one the most. This is a snake bite. So it's one of the pub blends. It's part harp beer and part strongbow cider. It's supposed to be 50-50. I don't like sweet drinks, so I tell them to do stronger beer pour than cider. Ooh, it's so perfect. It's so refreshing on a hot day. Slightly sweet and tart because of the cider, but mostly has that really classic, just clean ale flavor. You can't go wrong. And if you do want to mix it up and make it even sweeter or make it a little fancier, ask for them to make it black because they'll put a little bit of black currant juice in there. And because there truly are no losers in this game, I picked up the Black Velvet, which is half Guinness and half Strongbow Cider. For those of you who don't like Guinness or think a full Guinness is too much and a full meal, this might be a good in-between for you. It's not super sweet. The Guinness is just bitter enough to cut through some of the sweetness of the cider. I like it. It's a yin and yang situation. And of course, one of the best things about Epcot in general is even when it's really busy, you can find these pockets of calm and luxuriation. It is January 2nd right now. It is an incredibly busy day. People are still here for the holidays. There were no park reservations left at any park. The park is packed. There's 100 plus minute waits, a lot of rides, but we are able to be back here in the United Kingdom in a pretty quiet area. Lots of kids running around having fun. So one thing I like about Epcot is that if you explore back into the pavilions, you can have a relaxing day no matter the crowd situation. All right. Good Deal. choice. Good choice for beverages. A solid choice. Can't go wrong at the pub. 
It's time for appetizers. Appetizers? My favorite course of the meal. Please. Please? Right? Yeah. Rock, Rock paper, scissors, scissors, shoot. shoot. I asked you for help. Feels pretty good. Feels Does pretty it? pretty good. Feels great. Okay. Now, eating is a little harder than drinks in Epcot because there are some places that are very, very good and some places that are very, very mediocre. Appetizers I like. Um, UK is out. Cannot pick anything here. So fish and chips, no dice. Um, we could go to there's Canada, no, because with no... We could go to Mexico. I like empanadas quite a bit. We could go to Germany, giant pretzel. France, yeah, France. We're going to France. I want a cheese plate. Cheese time. Bonjour, mon ami. We have made it to France, and that is the end of my French speaking. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> you're welcome, everyone. Um, as I said earlier, France is my favorite country to eat in, mostly because I love cheese and bread, and those are two staples in French cooking. But you really can't go wrong here in the France Pavilion. There's multiple places to eat and drink, and all of them are delicious. If you're looking for a sit-down restaurant, they've got Le Chef de France, one of the oldest restaurants in the park, still serves up some delicious cuisine. If you're looking for a more fine dining experience, Monsieur Paul just reopened. I've actually not been to Monsieur Paul. Maybe this is the year. And the further you get back into the pavilion, that's where you'll find your delicious quick service choices. You've got Lardis and Deglasses, which is the amazing ice cream shop, which I am sad we can't have that for dessert now. Back in the new section of the pavilion by Remy's Ratatouille Adventure, you've got La Creperie, which is both a sit down and a walk up window serving both savory and sweet crepes. But for me, if I'm forced to choose only one place to get something to eat in the France Pavilion, it's right here. Layal, which is the French bakery. It's been my favorite quick service restaurant in Walt Disney World since I can remember, since it was back where the ice cream shop is now and much, much smaller. This is where you're gonna get French pastries, both sweet and savory. You're gonna get delicious cheesy treats like uh, cheese and ham croissant. You're gonna get quiche. You're gonna get a strawberry tart I'm obsessed with. Coffees, wines, cheese plate, bisque. It is just simple deliciousness, and it's my favorite quick service in all of Walt Disney World. Now, since we're doing an appetizer, I'm gonna go for the cheese plate with the freshly baked baguette. They make these every day in-house, so they're not gonna get better than this. Uh, but if you are eating here for more of a meal, I love the ham and cheese croissant. I love the quiches. I love the croque monsieur. I love the um, roulard, which is like a piece of bread that they've rolled with cheese and bacon. There's an apple and cheese and ham baguette. I, I truly don't think you can go wrong picking something in the French bakery if you, like me, love cheese and bread. Here it is, the French bakery cheese plate. It comes with five different cheeses. You've got a blue right here, a goat. This one is described as just a soft ripened cheese. You have a brie or camembert here, and then you've got a little bit firmer cheese right here. And then it does not come with, if you'd like bread, you have to purchase it separately. You can get a half baguette or a full baguette. And I just wanna let you know that a full baguette, AKA double this, is only 350. That may be the best use of $3 in Disney World I can think of. Which cheese are you gonna try first? I'm a brie man. Not mad at a cheese board. Never mad at a cheese board. And I don't think it gets better than one directly from France. Yeah, absolutely. We've teased it, but charcuterie board showdown will, will happen this year, sooner rather than later, I promise. Okay. Uh, yeah, must, must A must, if we, if we have to. Certainly not for selfish reasons. No, I don't want to go eat meats and cheeses around Walt Disney World, but I will for science. Yeah, same. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, what were your favorites? All right, let's rank, yeah, let's each rank the board. First of all, shout out to the baguette, house made every day. You can tell it is just flaky, buttery, I mean, it is perfection. Yeah, I'm like Oprah. I love some carbs. I love bread. <laughs> um, my number one has got to be the goat cheese. I'm a huge goat cheese fan. It is smooth and creamy, a little tangy. Perfect. My number one is the brie. Mm. I'm a brie man, and that brie, incredible. Number two for you. My number two is the brie. 
Interesting. My number two is the goat. There you go. We just sort of flip flopped our top two slots. We sure did. My number three is the hardest cheese. Um, it's got a little bit of nuttiness. It's a little bit sharper than the brie or the goat, but I really enjoyed that one. We are aligned. My number three is the hard cheese, uh, which was surprising. I didn't think that it would be in my top three. I didn't think they would take home bronze, but mm. it did. Mm. What's your number four? Oh, my number four is the blue cheese. Ooh. It is a very strong blue, so it you is. have to be a fan of blue cheese and sort of funkier cheeses. But I am a fan of that. I think it's a very unique flavor that you don't get often elsewhere. So I appreciate that. My number four would actually be the one that was in the little package, which is a semi-soft cheese. Mm -hmm. It kind of sits in between your smoother cheeses and your harder, nuttier cheeses. But it also had a little bit of that funkiness that the blue had, but not as intense. Right. I think it's number five for me because the flavor takes a little bit longer to develop. And the texture, for those of you who are a little bit more texture sensitive, can be off-putting. Sure. Uh, which, of course, leaves me number five, the blue, you the, the little package cheese. Yep. But if you love cheese, you can't you can't go wrong with a, a cheese plate or anything in the France bakery. Yeah. Maybe Hard to I'll be. win entrees. Maybe you'll win entrees. But I also think we should maybe take a food break, and I'm dying to play the new DuckTales adventure game. Life is like a hurricane here in Duckburg. Let's do it. DuckTales World Showcase Adventure is the game that replaced Kim Possible, which is the game that takes you around World Showcase on a different adventure. And now we're going to hang out with Huey, Dewey, and Louie as we solve crime, I assume. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, we have to decide a country to start in. Do you think... Sorry, what? Oh, we, yeah, sorry, we have to sorry. choose a country. Should we choose France since we're literally right here? Advent share. Okay. An advent share vision. Got it. Okay. Anybody can play this. It's in the Disney Parks Curse app. Curse me kilts. How do you work this plastic contraption? This is Scrooge. I love it. All right. Supernatural experts. And random kids on the internet. <laughs> Those are our favorites. Doohickey. Scrooge is not very... Doohickery. Blah. We're skipping exposition. This is like a who, DCOM level who of needs, exposition. Who needs exposition? Not us. Do you get stuck? Hey, we're not going to get stuck. We're good. All right. In France. Meet you in France. We, we we're here. here. Oh, they have to fly. Travel to France and press your OK button to activate. By the fountain. Let's go. Activate. Holy spirit. Activate. Remember that TikTok? Okay. Edvin share mission, assistant request between a rock and some more rocks. Okay. Oh, they look all okay. muddy and dirty and gross. What are we supposed to do? Head down to the antique camera by the water, then press OK to call Giro? Yiro? Let's go. Is it Euro? Euro is Greek. Giro. Go. Okay. We have arrived at the antique camera after fighting through throngs of people here in France, and we are going to call Giro. The Gear Loose 35 Drillometer camera is a sophisticated. It's an old-timey camera. Stand behind it look and at the look suitcases. at the suitcases. What's on the side of the big gray one? It looks to be a, a black gray. button. Look through the viewfinder. And press OK to power up the infrared security beam. OK, you push the button. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, that feels dramatic. We're supposed to hide. Have you seen me? Don't hide. <laughs> okay, they're dirty. Yep. They're free and clear. Great. Love it. Do it again? Absolutely not. We've completed the oh. mission. That feels... I feel accomplished. Do you? Yeah. What I do think is nice is that that took three seconds. And so unlike some of the other interactive games on the park that were a lot of time invested, you completed the mission very quickly and you could keep going. I assume there's dozens of these missions and kids tend to love these things. So, you know what? Are you distracted? Yeah, we're getting more messages. Also, do you remember the first one they released in this? It was the Kim Possible one. Kim Possible, ba -ba -da, call me, ba -ba -da, beat me. Ba -ba -da. If you want to rage me, if you want to page me, it's okay. A oh, page your kids. 
is a way to get a hold of someone before cell phones. It was this thing you wore on your belt and somebody could call a phone number and it would make the little device beep and it would give you a phone number to call back because not everybody had a cell phone. Yeah, we use landlines to call people back. Ah, uh, yes. Maybe even a rotary phone. Behind the scenes, we just did an escape room when Max was here a few days ago and the game master literally had to explain to us how to use a rotary phone and we're like, we're, we're good. good. And she was like, nobody else knows how to use it. And we're like, mm. Mm. Ah, yes, because we're an old. We're old. I see. Mm. Anyway. Anyway. Okay. All that saving France really worked up an Did appetite. Did we save anything? I think we shot infrared beams everywhere. Well, we should get out of here then. Please. 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 Here we go. Rock, Rock paper, paper, scissors, scissors shoot. shoot. Nice. Rock, Rock paper, paper, scissors, scissors shoot. shoot. Finally. I don't know what I want. I'm just happy I won. Congratulations on your entree victory. Hopefully one of many. There are tons of options, which is why this is difficult. So we've eliminated France, which is a bummer, but that's okay. We've eliminated the UK, so no fish and chips. I'd love to blur out another bratwurst. That'd be fun. Um, maybe sushi. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Morocco's good. Mexico. I want an empanada. You know what? This is just such a stunning view. I love that nothing is impeding my view across the lagoon to look at the other countries. Not a singular thing. Not Honestly, I have a clear shot from here to Mexico. And Mexico. In the Mexico Pavilion, you have a plethora of options. You have San Angel in the restaurante, La Hacienda de San Angel, and the cantina. But for our empanadas, we are going to La Choza, which is a, a stand on the exterior of the pavilion itself, near the amazing pyramid structure where you can also find San and Helen and Restaurante. I'm excited. I could also be tempted with the Marg. Should I? Maybe? Looks like yes. Now what do all of those things mean? The San and Helen and Restaurante is located inside the pyramid here in the Mexico Pavilion, and it is a little bit more of what you may think of here as a citizen in the U.S. of Mexican cuisine. It's almost, it almost leans towards a fancier Tex-Mex, if I had to describe it, where La Hacienda de San Angel is more traditional Mexican fare. So if you're looking for a more traditional dining experience, something that might push the boundaries of what you'd expect, try out La Hacienda. The cantina itself is a quick service option that has a variety of easy grab-and-go uh, bites from nachos, tacos, so if you're looking for a quick bite, I'd stop by the cantina. Ultimately, it's difficult to find anything bad in the Mexico Pavilion. I'd stop here for any bite at any time of day, be it apps or like we're doing here, our entree. Where we are going, however, as I mentioned previously, is Choza de Margarita, which is most famously known for their margaritas. If you want to be daring, you can get the Fiesta Margarita, which is a layered margarita with each of the different margarita flavors. It's a choice. If you are into sweet drinks, this might be right up your alley. It'll certainly be a flavor journey. They are also known for things like the barbacoa empanadas, as well as their street corn. I think for us today, we're going to be leaning heavily on that barbacoa empanada. And then maybe, if you twisted my arm, I could get a margarita on the rocks. Maybe. It's going to happen. We have picked up our food. We got the empanada de barbacoa, which is an empanada filled with barbacoa beef, topped with chipotle sauce, crema mexicana, and queso fresco with a side of cornesquites, which looks delicious all the way around. And then, because I can't be tamed, we got the guacamole, which is topped with mango and pumpkin seeds with papitas, and their house tortilla chips. <sighs> Entree indeed. I'm going to soak in this victory. I also grabbed the cucumber margarita, which is blanco tequila, fresh cucumber and lime juice with abasolo corn whiskey, agave, and rhubarb bitters. It's rimmed with tahini chili and lime powder. And if you think I'm coming to eat dinner in the Mexico Pavilion and not grabbing a signature margarita, tu eres loca. This is the El Diablo. It's blanco tequila, mezcal, fresh lime juice, agave cucumber, jalapeno, and a hibiscus salt rim. Oh, wow. The empanada itself, very crispy, fried beautifully. The barbacoa beef on the interior, super deep in its flavor. 
Uh, I expected there'd be a little bit more beef, if I'm being honest, but it's, what's there is very, very good. The red sauce is mildly spicy, so even if you're spice sensitive, it's not going to be overwhelming. It's just very balanced. The acid cuts through the rich, richness of the meat really, really well. Big fan. Now this is a game changer. Oh, 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 wow. You got to try that. Mm. Mm. I love guacamole. One of my favorite snacks. Also plant-based, so if you're a plant-based eater, you are not skimping on flavor by doing guac. So good. Oh, my gosh. The house-made chips are unbelievable. They are very thick and able to hold up to all that delicious avocado flavor, but they are still salty and crispy and delicious. One thing I love about the Mexico Pavilion is that everywhere you get guacamole, it's slightly different. It's all the same base, which is creamy and has a little bit of acidity from some lime juice. And I don't know how they get perfect avocados, 365. But if you go to La Cantina, it's going to have a little bit different topping. And if you go to uh, La Cava del Tequila inside the tequila bar, they also have a little bit different topping. So you can go guacamole three ways. Some of the best guacamole I've ever had. Long standing, one of my favorites. Now, one thing I don't love as much as I did in a, in a pre panini world is it used to be that they house made all the drinks to order there. And I think here as well, they now batch make them, which is just also easier for all the volume. But this one is still very, very good. It's got a little bit of spice and heat because of the jalapeno, but it's mostly incredibly refreshing, a slight sweetness to it. I love the smokiness from the mezcal. Something a little different and unique. Big fan. The cucumber marg is incredibly refreshing. You can still taste the tequila and the slightly sweet corn whiskey, and it does have a corn flavor. So you have to like to taste the corn. I do. And this is very refreshing, countering with the tahini chili on the exterior. Cheers. This on a hot day, I would 11 out of 10 recommend this. Okay. I am full. And there are no losers in Winter Picks Dinner. Correct. That said, I have an idea of what I want for dessert. I don't. What? Ready? Yep. Rock, tape, shoot, shoot. Feels good. Feels good. There are a lot of options for dessert. I mean, really for food and drink in the World Showcase anyway, but for dessert specifically. You've got a very underrated cookie shop in Morocco, some shaved ice, takigori, in Japan. Can't go to France for ice cream as much as we may want to. Norway has a pretty killer bakery. Germany. For bread pudding? For caramel cooch. I know we joke and call it the caramel cooch, but how is it actually pronounced? It is spelled like caramel cooch. Right, right, but it, I, I know and I know that the word the meaning is kitchen. Like, I think it has a Can we ask Siri? Yeah, hold on. Okay. Education. Kuha. 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 Always learning. Always learn. You're never too cool to learn. Also, those of you who actually speak German, could you let us know in the comments how you would pronounce that phonetically? Yes. Kucha. Is that even close? Regardless. We know it's not kooch. Hey. <laughs> Caramel Kucha, again, sorry for the mispronunciation, is the Caramel Kitchen located here in the Germany Pavilion, and it specializes in all things caramel. And naturally, it is sponsored by Werther's Original, the favorite pocket candy of an entire generation, but here it is utilized in unique ways. Now, there's a line that is going out the door of this shop currently just because of how busy it is in the park, so I have chosen to mobile order our treats, and we have three unique items to pick up, so I've just pressed that I am here, and I'm going to go pick up the order. On busy nights like tonight, I always recommend using services like mobile order. It just makes sense, and it makes your life a lot easier than having to stand in line and queue up and just wait. You can wait anywhere. You don't have to wait in the line. Outside of the Caramel Kuha, you also have the Summerfest, which is where you can get things like brats, the beer garden, which is your sit-down restaurant here in the Germany Pavilion, as well as a variety of beer carts to get some of the local specialties that can be found here in the Germany Pavilion. And on one of the six days out of the entire calendar year that a festival is not occurring here at Epcot, 
we are utilizing one of the festival booths that currently sits empty to highlight our delicious haul from Caramel Kuch. Thank you, Vanna. I appreciate it. We have picked up the Caramel Butter Bar, which is caramel layered into buttery shortbread. This is a classic. This is one of the most iconic things you can get from the Caramel Kitchen. Oh, I'm very, very excited. We've also gotten the Caramel Apple Oatmeal Cookie, which as the name would suggest is an oatmeal cookie with diced apples and pecans and then drizzled with a bit of Werther's Caramel. And then Molly, what did you pick up? And I couldn't resist. This is a seasonal item that comes and goes off the menu, but it's a gingerbread cookie sandwich. So you're looking at gingerbread cookies with buttercream icing and then the caramel drizzled in between there. Divine. I am excited. I got two things. I'm not mad about it. The butter bar is exceedingly rich. I mean, it is a overt flavor of butter. Good, right? A, greasy. Yeah. A, greasy from all the butter. A deep flavor of butter. The shortbread is present. And then the caramel, which is sort of this internal layer, just sneaks in at sort of the tail end. Full and complete, but very, very rich. Not super sweet. You can taste the sugar, but incredibly rich. So be aware of that going in. It can be very filling because of how rich it is. What steals the show is this oatmeal cookie. Oatmeal cookies are my favorite cookie. This takes it to another level. It is thick, crumbly on the exterior, but moist on the interior. The apple is genius because the apple is hydroscopic and it wants to keep that moisture in, which is what hydroscopic means. Big science word time. It's hydroscopic with that in the caramel, so it keeps all the moisture inside the cookie. Oh. Now, had I won, we were also coming to Germany, but I was going to get the salted pretzel bread pudding, which is when it's from Summerfest and they take the literal big German pretzels and they make bread pudding out of it and drizzle it with Werther's caramel. It's excellent. I think it's one of the most underrated and delicious desserts in Epcot. Get that if you have the chance. That said, I'm never going to be mad about a trip to the caramel Kuch, uh, especially when this is in season. This is the gingerbread sandwich cookie. And why I like it, you know I don't love sickly sweet things. And while it is very sweet because of all this buttercream, the cookies themselves are more spicy than they are sweet. And of course, by spicy, I don't mean hot. I mean, it's that ginger, it's that nutmeg. It reminds me of a very good, very moist and delicious ginger snap. You've got the caramel in there, the buttercream. This is a delightful treat. And I do like that everything at the caramel kuch is packaged to go. So you can eat a little bit and save it and so on and so forth. It makes for good take homes as does the caramel corn. After dinner drinks, dessert was very, very good. I could probably use something as a palate cleanser though. Yeah, and there's more delicious drinks to be had. Maybe some underrated off the radar drinks I have in my mind. So hoping I win. I'm gonna pull out all the stops on this one. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. What is that? Fire. It beats everything. Does it beat water balloon? <laughs> That's fire. Beats everything. Oh, really? Does it beat water balloon? Oh. Enough fooling around. Fire. Yeah, back to the very serious game of rock, paper, We're scissors. All incredibly, incredibly. Everyone's very intense. invested in this. It's tense. Always. Ready? Yeah. Cool. Ready? Yep. Rock, rock paper, paper, scissors, shoot. Oh, you have the mic. Hi. Uh, let's go grab an after dinner cocktail. I think there are a lot of well known locations to pick up beverages in the showcase. Specifically, when people think about drinking around the world, most people go towards Mexico, but that's already been eliminated for us. Or the UK to the Rosen Crab, but we did that earlier for, our, for the first stop. Uh, France, which not necessarily my favorite, but they do have some great champagne based drinks. Uh, again, we can't go there because we went there for our apps. A lot of people like Italy for their wine selection. I'm not feeling wine right now. Um, Germany for beer, but again, just had dessert here. I think some things that fly under the radar for a lot of folks would be something like Japan, which has a unique sake selection. 
or Morocco, which has a good walk-up bar. It's by Sir Table. Not a lot of people, I don't think Morocco gets a lot of love. Let's go to China and grab a beer from China. I didn't see that coming. I thought for sure we were getting sake. In the spirit of full transparency, the food in the China Pavilion isn't necessarily my favorite. It always tastes like heavily Americanized or American-influenced Chinese food, which isn't really what I'm looking for when I want a more authentic eating experience. Now, the full-service restaurant Nine Dragons does win me over with their portion size that you're going to get as a part of their meals, but if you're talking the Lotus Blossom Cafe, which is their quick-service option, if you enjoy heavily Americanized Chinese food, this might be right up your alley, but for me, it's not necessarily my favorite. Now, back in the market, however, is where we are headed to go and grab one of the traditional Chinese brews. Now, while the standard box operations for food in the China Pavilion might not be the best, you know what they do excel at? Festivals. Festivals. China is usually one of my favorite spots for festivals, and Festival of the Arts is coming up soon. I'm very excited to see what they serve. I'm excited for Festival of the Arts in general because I think it's a really fun festival. One of my favorite things as we walk through the China Pavilion, I'm, I'm reminded of it, is they hide these chalk art characters of famous Disney characters in the countries they'd be in. So while you're walking around, you might find a chalk drawing of Mushu or Kriki or Little Brother here in China. You might find um, Koda and Kenai in Canada. You might find the Aristocats in France. It's just a really fun thing for Festival of the Arts. So you guys know we'll be back here uh, when Festival of the Arts starts to cover as much as possible. And I'm very excited. We ended up making our way through the market in the China Pavilion back to the House of Good Fortune, which is the merchandise shop located at the rear of the pavilion. Fun fact. A lot of the lines in these pavilions when you're waiting for food or beverages can get very long. But a special hack is a lot of the merch shops sell some of the alcohol that you can find out in the pavilion itself. And a great example is here. Thank you, Vanna, where we picked up our two brews. I myself got the Sing Tao, which again, I apologize if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly. And Molly picked up the Lucky Buddha. Cheers. Oh, this is my first time having a Sing Tao. It is light, has a little bit of a sort of almost woody taste to it. I actually dig it. If it's a hot day in Epcot, and most days usually are, this isn't going to be too heavy on your stomach and really weigh you down. Cheers. Cheers. That's pretty good. This is my first time having a Lucky Buddha. It does remind me a little bit of the Sing Tao. Um, it's very light. It reminds me of a little bit of like a Heineken if I was to liken it to something that more people have tried. Um, it's definitely got more beer flavor than a domestic American lager like a Bud Light. Um, I'm, I'm rather enjoying it. But I, uh, like Alan said, this is a great hack. If it's a busy day, you can usually get drinks much, much faster if you go back into the country shops. And it's not just beer in the back of the pavilions. They have wine in several shops. They had plum wine here. They have wine in France. They've got wine in Canada. They have beer in Canada as well. They have sake in Japan. Also here they had um, a Chinese spirit called Baiju, which is kind of their version of vodka. So if it is a really busy day and you aren't set on like a certain craft cocktail or something, Thing, come into the shops and you may be able to find a beer straight from that country. It's late. Yeah. And I know what a lot of you are thinking. Yeah. What a fun way to wrap up. True. Delicious beer. But wait, there's more. <gasps> final round. No. Yeah. Final round. Was that a good shock taste? Yeah, was shock. that convincing? Like yeah. I didn't know? You uh, should try out to be a dramatization actress. That is my dream job. I don't have the chops to cut it as an actual actress in Hollywood, but like Investigative Discovery Channel, History Channel, <laughs> call me. I'm your girl. <laughs> Um, no, but because of what we were just talking about, because there's so much goodness in these pavilions that people often look over in the gift shop specifically, we decided to add the candy slash snack round. Candy snack round. And that means we are going to do one last round of rock, paper, scissors, and the choice has to be made from going to a gift shop only. No quick service, no full service, no carts, only a gift shop where you're going to pick up an authentic snack from that country. Okay. Oh, snack round. Candy set round. New addition to Winter Picks Dinner. You ready? Is that a sound effect for the cracking of your knuckles? No, that was my knuckles cracking. I definitely didn't do that. Oh, yeah. Anyway, shall we? Yeah. Rock, paper, scissors, okay. shoot. Okay, cool. Rock, Rock paper, paper, scissors, shoot. shoot. Okay, one more time. Rock, Rock paper, paper, scissors, shoot. shoot. Ooh. 
Oh, he's back. Oh, he's back. I'm sorry. By the way, there's really only one choice for this in my eyes, and that's Mitsukoshi in Japan. So we're going to Japan. That's true. We have made it to Japan to go visit Mitsukoshi. Now, the Mitsukoshi National Department Store was originally founded in 1673. So that is nearly 350 years ago and is headquartered in Tokyo, Japan. Located atop the Mitsukoshi Department Store is Tokyo Dining and Teppanito. Teppanito you would know as the hibachi style eating experience and Tokyo Dining is a very similar menu sans the hibachi. You also have the Katsura Grill, which is the quick service offering that is standard, what you'd sort of anticipate as Japanese fare with an American influence. So if that's what you're into, go ahead and check it out. For me, if I were to eat here, it would probably be a Teppanito just because I'm a sucker for a good hibachi experience. But that's not why we're here. We are here for Mitsukoshi. The Mitsukoshi store here in Epcot is huge. I remember when I worked in merchandise here in Epcot, it was always, and that was when mouse gear was a thing. We'd always talk about Mitsukoshi being pretty darn big in terms of its square footage and the footprint that it takes up. And it covers a wide array of different merch options from plush toys to finding pearls to kimonos. You can get incense and I mean swords as well. Although you'll have to send those to the front of the park or to your resort room. But what we are interested in is located to the very rear of Mitsukoshi and that is the snack location. We have arrived at the rear of Mitsukoshi where you can find a variety of traditional Japanese snacks and treats. Now this ranges from things that are a little bit more easily acceptable for our Western palates to things that might be a little bit more unique. I am going to try to find something that is just unique enough, but I think we'll still enjoy it. What about you? I, yeah, I think I'm gonna look at candy treats that may have a unique flavor. They tend to have a variety of Kit Kats, which are one of my favorite candies. They have Pocky, which I really like too. They sometimes have Panda Yum Yums. So Ooh, I'm gonna find something yums. like that. All right, well, ready? Go. Break. The grand reveal. The grand reveal, the candy reveal. Three, two, one. I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm not really sure what this is. It's a very shocked looking teddy bear, which is why I picked it. What flavor is it? I don't know. I'll try it first. I got soft ice cream shaped cute candy and I bought uh, it specifically because they call it cute on the bag. And I thought, right. that is cute. Cool, well, let's try them. That's cute. It's a cute little ice cream cone. And mine is a hard candy. I can't tell if it's gummy or hard yet. I'm not gonna lie, I was looking at Pocky, which are one of my favorite things. They're like these breadsticks dipped in different flavors. And I was also looking at the Panda, the Hello Panda, which I as a kid called Panda Yum Yum. Um, but they only have the strawberry flavor, which isn't my favorite. Oh. I too spend a lot of time looking at different things from marshmallows to Pocky. But this is a surprise. It's like a brown sugar caramel taste. Mine also feels like caramel. like. It is adjacent to a Werther's. I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting vanilla. Huh. Not bad and cute. Yeah, I, I can dig it. It makes me want to do a whole video where all we do is go get canned or bottled beers, wines, whatever, and snacks like chips and candy bars from oh, each yeah. country. That'd be a lot of fun. We should do that. I wanted to do that for a while. So yeah. if you'd watch it, let us know. Yeah, let us know in the comments. It's pretty tasty. I don't know that I would say buy a treat from the gift shop over getting an actual treat in the park, but it's a fun way to explore the countries. It'd be a fun way to engage with your kids, yeah. take homes. And it's also just a nice way to sort of learn something new about a culture in a way that is safe and controlled. And completely authentic. This is directly from Japan. It's not been Americanized at all. You're getting the real deal. Well, almost time for fireworks. Ooh, I do love Harmonious. If you had fun following along with Winter Pick Center, let us know in the comments. Let us know where we should battle it out next. Be sure to like and subscribe if you're new. And be sure to ring that notification bell and follow us on all our socials. And until next time, friends, I'm Molly. And I'm Alan. And it's been magical. Bye. Bye. Let's go see the fireworks. I can't wait.